I am two days late to the third anniversary of the play I wrote. Today, I will be watching my sibling's performance of a play written by the man who inspired me, to which he wrote a play in a week. It feels strange and unusual. I'm in a weird spot in my life, a strange sort of limbo where I can't feel anything, but I express joy. I'm only truly very happy for my sibling, which isn't to say I'm excited for my friends, a part of the production. I'm proud of them. The rehearsal they had blew me away. There's just something in me that's empty and hollow and unsatisfied. My friend had made a comment recently about the YouTube video of my play that I had posted, how low quality it was, which is true, but it stung. It stung so much I went on a rant about my feelings, about how I was treated during my production on Twitter, like any non-self-respecting creative would do. December 7th, 2018, I had asked to go to the library, or maybe I was already in the library, and I opened up a Google Doc, a webcomic where a one-eyed cosmic creature was terrorizing a young girl and her dreams was on my mind. It was the only thing I had thought about all day that didn't cause me immense distress. So I started writing. A fire crackles. Adam is sitting alone next to it. There is one chair, but Adam doesn't sit in it. He is tired. It is dark. Watcher sits across. A world of tragedy had sprung up from my keyboard, filling my thoughts, my mind, my ears, and my eyes. Rules for this universe were all I could think about, the massive, sprawling history laid out in front of me. I could think of nothing else and only everything more. The stars in the universe smiled back at me, and all I could say was hello. The terror of the economic crash that descended the world into extreme poverty to the point where somehow, against all odds, fucking Europe survived. The trash town civilization was resting peacefully in my mind's eye. The people huddled in warmth and barely any clothing to keep themselves protected from the harshest winter. The food scarce, the money harder to find to even pay for it. And at the center of it, a man... Old, tired, alone, sat at a fire with what he could only describe as his brother. He knew everything going on in the world and couldn't speak about it. There was no one left to listen. No one cared. A hotel room, a young woman was murdered for trying to leave, a rich man taking her life at his hands, be being completely unable to cope with it, fleeing, running as if his life depended upon it. A detective ready to lay their life on the line for the well-being of their spouse. And an elder god who grew tired, who grew restless and bored. All of these pieces came together and I had a story, a story that would end in ruin, but not quite. I couldn't help but share the idea to it to everyone I knew, wanting to share it with everyone that I could. So I wrote for about a solid couple of months. I wrote and wrote and wrote, piecing together the puzzle that was the world of watching over. Did you know that depending on the ethnicity of the characters, they spoke differently? Then I got the news. I could put on this play for my high school. I had to get my rough draft out, and so I did, just in time for casting, just in time for our first read-through. Finally, new eyes on my piece that I've been working on for so long. It wasn't spectacular, obviously, um, but it was enough for me to lay down the groundwork. In an entire week, I fixed it. Obviously not perfect, but enough. One of my actors immediately dropped out. I couldn't possibly blame her. I couldn't possibly ever be mad at her. I don't think anyone was truly ever nonsense that was the first draft. Um, God, you, you want to know how to fit an entire monologue into 12 pages? I could tell you. I set to work. It was all me. My inspiration 
more or less sat around to play the adult role whenever something came up, but in the end, everything was pretty much done by me, except for music. It wasn't easy. Most of the time we had to give up the theater. I couldn't complain, you know, it was all a miracle that I was even doing this. I should be grateful to my school for lending their environment. Many of my actors had dropped out, which stunted the ideas I had. A lot of things had to be shifted, and eventually it was either my close friends or people who didn't know we'd be friends after this experience. I wish not to speak ill of my actors. We all had to do things the best we could. Our situations were simply not as ideal. Heaven forbid you have one of your actors go home because they fell up the stairs. This started to take yet another turn. The strain and stress of miscommunications, people not always getting able to show up, my home life and then my school life. Believe it or not, school doesn't slow down when you're basically one manning an entire play. It always felt like things were picking up faster and faster, and I'd have to keep up only knowing that after school I wouldn't be able to go home until 5.30, feeling drained and like a puddle with only more to do. There would be times I couldn't even show up to my own rehearsals. The strain was starting to affect my health. My home life wasn't great either. It was like a free-for-all at all points of my life. All I could do was to survive on what was constantly being told to me how good of a job I was doing for putting on this play and how fantastic my writing was, despite my grades clearly sli slipping and all I could do was to keep sleeping at night even if I could close my eyes to drift to the nothingness that was sleep. I don't remember much of my production time. I don't remember, if at all, how much funding we got. I'm fairly certain every costume was brought in by the casts themselves. We didn't even go to a thrift store. We did! I simply was too d stressed to remember. My actors... My friends were excited for the art that we were producing. Some were even drawing for it. Beautiful and inspiring art. The different interpretations kept me just going, fueling me, reminding me that I'm not the only one a part of this. But I couldn't help but feel just tired. I wanted it to be over already. January is the longest month in the year and it only felt longer. I think the first moment of peace I experienced was when we had our first performance and I left the theater with my father. Even these events might not even be entirely correct, but all I know is that he took me to a Jimmy John's <laughs> and I sat in a booth wearing my suit, worn down more than an old horse and an ate an entire 16 inch sandwich in one sitting. We, um, performed three or maybe it was four. I simply cannot remember anymore. Everything was a blur. Everything was muscle memory. I think my cousin was there, but not his sister. I think my friends were there, but not all of them. I think my grandparents were there, but I can't tell you with certainty. I can't remember anything but pushing the button at the light board whenever one of my ridiculous cues came up. And let me tell you, some of those labels were ridiculous, I think. I know there was a party at my house. I know that one of my friends poured soda into a plate because he couldn't find the cups. I know that we sat in a per circle playing Never Have I Ever. I know someone had opened the door and suddenly there was the pizza man. I know I was there, but mentally I was not. Our final night, my director, the person who kept me moving, came to me and said, Do you want to do a play professionally? It was all I could think about the entire time. I could do this play professionally my senior year. I could get somewhere in life. I could get a start into something. Ever since I was young, I was afraid that high school would kill me before I graduated. And here I was with an opportunity to share my art to so many people in my local community. It was only until after the party ended, about like... 
four minutes or something that I realized how sad, how empty, how alone I felt that after all of it, I was just a hollow. I begged for my boyfriend to stay a bit longer, to fill the hole in my chest, to keep my worries at bay. He tucked me into bed and left, and then my mother called to me to clean up the party, to clean up the mess that I had made. And I cried. Everything was over, and was I even proud of the final product? The pipe dream of professionalism didn't even mean anything if I wasn't happy. If I felt nothing. That was February 2020. <laughs> and I was alone in the universe again. And it would stay that way. I don't think anyone needs a reminder of how the start of the pandemic felt like. I certainly don't. Um, but I, it came so quickly after my play that everything in my head was still so garbled that I could barely cope. All I could do was create to survive, but I had to survive to create. And that's when it happened. Reportedly, my director's job was on the line. Someone who broke, who brought a broken theater community together was going to be let go for budget reasons. I could barely see the red behind my tears. I did everything. I told as many people as I could. I emailed the person who held his job hostage, but it was never enough. I could never do enough. No one could. And his red string was snipped from my life. All I knew about him in that moment was confined to a something minute long video of him just staring at the camera. This man had brought my self-esteem from ashes and I didn't know if I could ever contact him again. My life went on as I fended for myself, barely making it through my final year of school, barely clinging on to my own life. My passion, my zeal was stripped away from me as I struggled to stay on calls for school as many eyes were on me, watching my every fuck up and thinking they were helping me, but thinking they could fix this broken toy. Everything, everyone was just doing their jobs, that's all everyone was doing, but some days I couldn't f help but feel I was out of their pay range, out of their... out of their skill range, like they didn't want to help me. I didn't even know what was wrong with me. I've graduated high school, and that's all that matters. My younger sibling chose to go to the same high school I went to. So in the end, I'll never truly be disconnected from this place. It won't let go, but neither will I technically until they graduate. I sit with my ear pressed up against the wall waiting for hope or anything. Just piggyback riding off of any good news I hear about my sibling's life. <laughs> But then, suddenly, my director was back. I couldn't help but cry, even though I knew it wasn't for me, but because he was alive. He hadn't abandoned everyone, like my horrible thoughts had told me. I desperately asked my sibling to get into contact, or get us into contact, and I think I got a no, I'm not really sure. I'm losing, I, at the time of writing this, I was losing my words as the performance draws near. I don't think, I, I don't care about how any of this all sounds or how truly well put together this is. The fact that I can finally talk about my experience for the first time in a year is enough. I have been adrift. My entire life has been spinning and spinning. There is no upside down or right side up anymore. 
I can barely think about my own play without crying. I've tried several times to write again, but it feels weak. It feels pointless. Who would be there to listen to me? To slam his weird fucking coffee cup on the stage and yell. <sighs> Maybe this is self-centered. Maybe it's ridiculous to say, but I feel pointless. I feel that loneliness on closing night. My story will p never properly be shared, so what's the point? I have a job now. I wake up to make sure to make it there on time. I ride the bus, and if I'm lucky, I'll have a ride. And then I get home late and... I usually have to feed myself. I just received my first paycheck this week. I'm still trying to refill this void. But it will never be enough for me. Will I fade into obscurity? It may sound, you know, very stupid for me to say all of that, considering this is only just things that happen in high school, but when you grow up like me, with that sinking feeling in the back of your mind saying you'll never make it to the next year of your life. That you've, all you've done and all you've made at this current moment is all you will ever have to be proud of if you die. And that you are nothing but a stunted child. The one missed opportunity, the one disconnection to Someone who made you feel like you finally had a start to an adult life feels like the end of it. Maybe I'm selfish. There's so much more in my life I should probably be focused on. But if until I see a single cent from my script, I can only continue to feel cynical. I can only continue to feel I let my friends down. I can only continue to feel like I'm chasing the idea of a person who may not even care as much as I do, but it's not, you know, it's not Ryan who doesn't care, it's people like the school district. <laughs> Ryan, if you do hear this, I can only continue to say nice things about you. Because in the end, COVID, losing your job, and other things are not your fault. You're a fucking adult with a life. Um, I can only be upset about the circumstances I live in, not the person who just happened to come into my life. You truly gave me a wonderful gift. And that gift was confidence. Teaching me to stand on my own two feet for myself. And by extension, my sibling. <laughs> Something I carry with me in my heart. I only wish you maybe said hi, maybe over email when you first came back, but I've been so delusional for so long, and I should be proud of what I make again. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for giving me self-esteem. <laughs> To my actors, my my friends, words cannot express the ten folds of kindness I wish to give to you in your life. I would cross oceans to support you. I would climb mountains to help you, and I would slay dragons to keep you alive. Though I am different now, and so are you, we are both humans, and together we created art that has changed many aspects of my life, and I won't let anyone take that away from me ever again. <sighs> to 
my sibling, I love you so much, and I, I write, I wrote this before I saw your performance. Though you may think you may not have a significant role, or no, that's not what I mean to say. Though you may think your ensemble work was not fantastic, I think it was. Of course, I can only see what the camera allows me to see, but being a part of the ensemble is enough. And doing the right parts is enough. And even if you weren't great, I would still love you so much. To my... Speak of the devil. Can you give me a moment? Can you give me a moment? And to my old school, honestly, screw you. Uh, but respectfully, I appreciate the support individually. But you could have done a little bit better for me and my actors. And to the school district, a royal fuck you. Good night. And please enjoy the performance of The Seven, a play written by a man in a week. <laughs>